Larry, it's good to have you here today. And let me just start on the reopening, uh, which is, I think the theme of the show today has been we're realizing it's going to be gradual, that there are some industries that are going to be changed for a lot longer than we would have thought a couple of months ago. Um, you know, what does that mean for what the recovery overall looks like? Well, I think the answer, as Larry said, is balance. We're trying to both balance our economic needs and our public health needs. And one important thing that hasn't been stressed, the first thing that happens as soon as you meet the White House guidelines is you can start providing um, non-emergency health care. We have been shrinking our health care industry amazingly during this pandemic because of the shutdown. And it's time for that to end. This shutdown is not only costing the economy, it's also costing human lives. No, Larry, you've been really specific about just how hard hit this industry is. And we've started to now hear it time and again. Interestingly enough, from college presidents, we're going to speak with Janet Napolitano in a moment. But the others we've talked to this week say they're losing tons of revenue because they take non-essential service, you know, revenue from their health uh, care, their hospital systems to support the, the colleges. They don't have that right now. So you actually picked up on this, especially in the GDP number, when you said, you know, the primary source of the decline in GDP constituting almost half the decline was the drop in medical services. If there's a silver lining, though, it's that these services are pent up demand. Unlike food and restaurant, you know, that's not going to be lost forever. This should come back. Right. Is it going to be soon enough to to help these hospitals avoid a worse fate? Well, think of all the procedures that we do just to stay healthy. You know, they're um, they range from, you know, uh, mammograms to having our blood pressure taken to all that stuff that we go to our doctor or, or uh, small emergency rooms for. Those aren't happening. And not doing those means people are going to die from those diseases later on if they don't get checked. So I think people are smart. <laughs> as soon as they're available, uh, they're going to rush back and do these life-saving things that the uh, shutdown has blocked them from doing. But are they going to go back to their normal hospital? I mean, we're going to be dealing with coronavirus, especially as the economy reopens. The hospitals are going to still have more of these patients, more protocols to make sure everybody's safe. I've seen different countries where they've tried to move, you know, those so-called non-essential or elective procedures to other facilities altogether. Would we need to see this pick up? And, of course, it's another financial hit for hospitals right now. But, you know, are we going to be able to service those needs in the traditional facilities? I certainly hope so. i, I got to imagine that larger hospitals uh, can isolate uh, the COVID patients on separate floors or in separate wings. Uh, and so our non-emergency procedures um, uh, and even some of our quasi-emergency procedures, you know, like uh, uh, a lot of heart surgery, for example, doesn't have to be done that moment. It still is something that should be done. All of that needs to restart. And I'm, you know, thank God I'm not a hospital administrator these days. Yeah. It's much safer being an economist. I'm sure they'll figure out a way. Yeah, no, I hope so. It's going to be a really difficult one. They're they're probably the ones uh, with most to lose and obviously uh, the ones who are tasked with saving the most lives at the same time. Maybe let's pivot to the Fed where, you know, your thoughts here are, are you know, hopeful, I guess, if, if we consider it in terms of what it means to the economy. You said they are basically telling the investing community, the public, that they are willing to do whatever it takes, as much as it takes, as long as it takes. It's the Mario Draghi approach on steroids, and it's making you more optimistic about the rest of the year. Is that right? Yes. It's, I mean, one of the great risks here was that we started, a, we would have started a debt deflation where people, because they didn't have revenue coming in, you know, had to default. And of course, when they default, the people who lent them the money are stretched and they may have to default. And that's one thing that we really want to avoid. Uh, and the Fed has basically backstop just about every debt there is in the economy. There are a few that they haven't, but, but it's unlikely we're going to start a debt deflation as a result of this. Also, the continued expansion of the money supply makes it highly unlikely that price levels are going to fall. Uh, it's much more likely that uh, not right away, but starting late this year and into next year, we're going to start to see an acceleration of inflation. The counter to that is that the high debt levels on all these companies, you know, everyone's having to issue debt to borrow right now. Even if it's backstopped by the Fed, it has to be repaid at some point. Uh, that's an argument for a much slower uh, growth period. That's an argument for Japan kind of zombie style growth for a decade. Uh, the quicker we pay down the debt, the better. But the, the argument is that's going to be a big overhang that keeps this from being anything close to inflationary. 
So it depends a lot on uh, what the Fed does with the repayments. Remember, um, they are the leverage by which those special purpose vehicles are lent out. Mm -hmm. Now, let's say I start repaying. So the Treasury gets its little tranche and the Fed gets its money back. What is the Fed going to do? It's a lot like running the, uh, the bond purchases, you know, just letting them run off. Generally, they didn't do that. And my suspicion is going down the road, they're not going to let the money that's being paid back simply run off either. Well, I, I want to talk to you more about what, what exactly that would look like. But I think for now, the idea is out there. And we'll see if they start hinting in that direction or not, which could make for a much stronger economy, uh, obviously. Larry, thanks. It's, it's really good to check in with you. Appreciate it today.